Hello, everyone. It's the year 2022, and climate change is real. So real that many worries prophesied would only happen in the far future, many of these things are happening today. We see wildfires starting in Australia, then wildfires in Europe. And then we have droughts, droughts that make everything hell somehow, right? Droughts that fuel despair in countries that seem to have nothing to do with the problem. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's that type of talk again, right? The doomsday talk, the world is going down talk. We've heard it so many times already. But am I lying? What I told you is happening today. I'm not making this up. It's happening right now. And if we don't take better climate action quickly, if we don't take action on climate change, then things will only get worse. Our planet will still exist. It will still be here, no matter what we do. It will still turn, the sun will still shine, but it will be an overall worse, less diverse, less equal place to live. So I think we all know we don't want that to happen, right? But how did we get here? How did we get to this point right now? So I don't want to turn this into a history lesson, um, so I'll keep it very brief. The history around the understanding of climate change from a science perspective started in the 1800s. And piece by piece, just like research works, we started to understand our climate a little bit better. Until today, we don't have a perfect understanding of climate change, but a better understanding of climate change than ever before. And it turns out that unlike what some media might communicate, Climate change is very, very clear. The science is very, very clear. 99% of scientific literature agrees on human cause climate change. And now some of you might say, oh, but there's 1% left. No, that 1% is what some might refer to as bad science. It's basically science that is not reproducible, science that doesn't really help us in anything. So the science is clear. And we also have some of the best research institutions, professionals, startups working on pressing solutions to climate change. Surely they will figure it out, right? And yet still we are here, right? Things don't seem to have fixed themselves. So what do we do about this? Climate change is complicated, it's depressing, right? And it's not just one small thing. It's a whole network of problems and sub-problems and sub-sub-problems and we seem to have to figure it out somehow. And we do have solutions to these problems. Turns out not all of them are as good as we'd like sometimes. There's compromises to be made, but we have something we could work with. Yet with all the trying that our governments and corporations and economic systems could muster, we're nowhere clear to tackling the issue appropriately. And a lot of people agree with me on this. Allow me to take you back to 2019. Amidst the fear of where our world is heading, a politician somewhere out there holds an interview, smiling into the cameras while talking about their green and sustainable transition plans. And they're not making themselves very popular that day. Because right outside that press room, we have voices. Loud, angry voices demanding change. We see people with signs saying, you'll die of old age, we die of climate change. It's the climate protest movement. And they are angry. Why are they angry, you might ask? Imagine you were on a boat. You're just on a boat. Somehow you got to. And now water starts rushing in. You don't know where from, but water is in the boat. What do you do? Chances are, step one, panic. Step two, panic more. And then maybe the third step is shout and cry and figure out someone who can fix this mess. Because I'm not a nautical engineer. I don't know how a boat works, so someone go fix it for me. Yet, what if the crew is watching you and they say, huh, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Yeah. If I was there, I would be terrified, right? Now, people have heard simply enough empty words from politicians or from corporations. They're just tired of it, and that's why they're angry. 
well. Not everyone is angry, actually. We only see some of the people out there on the streets. And then there's the rest. Let me answer you why the rest is not there. Any of you guys, what do you do when you have a challenging problem in your life? Say you're trying to get regular exercise, or maybe you're trying to get that perfect career path that you always envisioned you would have. How do you tackle those big issues? Do you just do it tomorrow? Do you wake up and you're like, I will figure out my life? Or maybe you will be intimidated and you will think, ah, uh, maybe I should assess the situation, you know, and then you can do it tomorrow or in a week or in a month or in a year, you know where this is going. It's very easy to become a master procrastinator if the challenge is big and you don't know how to approach it. And you know, that's fine. We're just human, right? But for climate change, we're not just one person. This is not just a personal issue. It's about everyone. And so we can't just not act. We have to do something. Something needs to happen. But here we are, right? Here we are. And so after the protests were happening, two years later, the Humboldt State University published a study that is the most frightening study I have ever seen. They asked 10,000 young people, just like us in the room here, from 10 different countries, how they felt about climate change. 95% of them said that climate change made them feel worried to some extent, and over 50% said when they thought about climate change, they felt anxious, powerless, and guilty. Uh, we even have a word for that now. It's called eco-anxiety. And let me tell you, it's not a good thing if people are so afraid that the medical community comes up with a new word for it. That's not what you want. Oh my, that sounds quite terrifying, right? You know, I think a lot of us in this room feel eco-anxiety. A lot of us feel like climate change is not going in a good way. I don't like what I'm looking at right now. And fear. Fear is a powerful emotion and it can be good, but right now fear is paralyzing people into inaction, into doing nothing because it's overwhelming. Now, not everyone is being overwhelmed because we see clearly some people are on the streets. They're protesting. They don't seem to be overwhelmed. They seem to somehow have found a way to channel what they believe is important into action, into speaking out about it. And I find the whole discussion around activists quite strange, actually, because there's those who love activists and those who hate activists. I guess activists are uncomfortable, but if we're talking about democracy today, I think activists are actually a key component of democracy. Because what are activists? Aren't they just people who have beliefs and they think that they should stand in for the values that they see in this world. They think that something is not good enough. We need to do better. We need to change something. And they speak out about it. Isn't that the whole point of democracy? Oh my God. Terrifying, right? Now, a lot of activists out there, they're incredibly courageous because a lot of us in this room can easily just speak our minds and nothing's going to happen. But for a lot of activists, they speak out against political systems that don't want them to speak up. And that takes courage. Now, I'm honestly not a very courageous person. I prefer to do my work quietly. And my background is in computer science, which means that I certainly followed quite the cliche of what some might call a geek or what you might see in a movie as the hacker guy. Basically, hoodie on, noise canceling headphones over your ears, just don't deal with the rest of the world. And I loved it. I loved having this type of life. When I studied computer science in the UK, I was just interested in science and learning and coding and doing whatever was the thing that was fun for me. That was my fulfillment in life. But then things changed. I started to volunteer with a small charity called Climate Science. And at first it was just a side gig. It was just something that I did on the side. 
And I thought, yeah, some good work experience. But then over time, because of climate science, I engaged with the science around climate change. I engaged with how things are looking today. And I felt like it doesn't look that good. And over time, I spent more and more time volunteering until eventually I volunteered full time and studied part time. Well, that's not how it's supposed to go. I don't think my thesis, thesis supervisor will be very happy about the thesis I submitted, but I made it through. And then there was the point where I realized climate change changed my life. I couldn't just keep on doing what I did before and pretend like nothing changed at all. I wanted to pretend like nothing changed at all. I started the master's after I finished my bachelor degree and I thought I can just move on somehow. It doesn't affect me. I can just keep going what I did before. Everyone tells you, you do a bachelor. Oh, maybe you should do a master afterwards. And so I kept going but I couldn't anymore. At some point, I just couldn't. And I decided, okay, I'm just going to stop attending classes. And eventually I stopped attending so many classes. You could say I practically dropped out. And I'm not saying everyone should drop out in the name of science or the name of climate change. No, I think that people are so afraid that they're willing to give up so much and change so much of their lives to do something good and to maybe help or to kind of fix this whole mess. Yeah. When we want to change how we approach climate change, we need to understand how change works. How does change work? It's basically simplify it three phases. You need to be aware, you need to understand, and then in the third phase, you need to act, you need to do something. So. It all started with the climate protests in 2019. People became aware because the climate protests, they were in your face. You could not look away. There was no way around them because they were everywhere. They were on the news, they were in your city. And that was great. But they also used a lot of fear, fear of where the world is heading. The fear that I mentioned in the very beginning of this talk, because that captures people's attention. It was perfect. The world listened up and then we lost them. We lost the people because we didn't follow up on anything. We just told them the world is going down and here we are. That's not very practical. And that's the problem that I have with how we've been approaching the pipeline of climate action, as I call it. We need the whole thing. We need awareness. And then we need the middle piece. I call it education. You may call it something different. We need to understand what is out there so that we can take action. Now, I think that there's one piece where we can see that this education, this understanding of what we're trying to do is key. Let's say Recycling. Recycling is a good example because people are aware of roughly how it works at home. You separate your trash into a few bins and then things will be recycled, right? Well, it's not that easy because if you recycle, but your local community doesn't have a good recycling infrastructure, then what are you going to do? Nothing is going to happen because all the trash lands on the same pile. Now you have done no recycling at all. Or maybe you've watched the news. And you heard that the energy transition needs to happen and you need to, you need to use renewable energy. What do you do if your country powers the energy grid with coal? It's out of your hands, right? Well, not exactly. And that's where climate change becomes complicated because it's not only about the everyday things we do. It's not only about the things that we believe is climate action that we believe make a difference. It's also about the bigger picture. It's about systems. It's about systemic solutions. So let's talk about systemic solutions. One of them actually is what this entire building here is about politics. How do we change the energy grid? Do I buy a power plant? Probably not, right? We go and vote. Voting is one way how we can influence the system. 
because the system needs to work with us so that we can take action. We need to be able to have solar panels so that we can put them on our roofs, right? It's about systems. It's about bigger pictures than just ourselves. And so education is where these systems come together. That's where we take the complicated part and we make it easy. And that's why I'm so passionate about the work I do at climate science, because climate science is all about creating a world where people can take better action by making climate change easy to understand so that not only scientists know how it work, but also those who haven't had a university degree, those who maybe even don't have a science background at all. And that's what we need. We need more people to understand climate change and its solutions. We need education everywhere so that people have access to it. Because it turns out that education and access, that's another whole big issue. Climate education information, if you look up for it, it's going to be in English probably. Now, a lot of people speak English, but even more people don't speak English. Now, where are they going to learn what to do? They're just going to see what the media portrays, but that's not always the whole picture. And so climate science started creating resources. We started as an Instagram account back in 2019 out of a dorm room. That was the early beginnings. And now we're one of the biggest climate education organizations in the world. And we have a long way to go because climate education isn't really on people's agendas. They don't really think about it. People try to wing it because we've always missed out on this puzzle piece. So. It's 2022 and climate change is still real. And yet, while people want to help, they don't know how. They don't understand climate change nor its solutions. So it's time we change that. And so there's two things I would like you to take away from today's talk. One, start learning again. Because if you care about climate change, it's time that you take action by learning about the solutions before trying to implement them. And then secondly, if you know someone who could help bring education into a local community, a state, or perhaps an entire country, then please get in touch and help us bring education to everyone. Because everyone, not only scientists, not only politicians, have an opportunity to be part of the solution to climate change. If we give them the opportunity for it. Thank you.